having uh, done what your your best. If you have done best, uh, you have won. Respected panel of judges and all my dear friends, a very good morning to all of you. I'm Sazne of CH College, um, and the topic that I picked for my extempore speech is moral obligations of a charismatic leader. Moral of a charismatic leader. Well, everyone out here, we all want to be a great leader. We all want to be a very charismatic leader. Um, how, how can we be a charismatic leader? Well, it all starts with our personality, developing the personality, developing our personality. Um, not only personality, there are in so many ways where we can be, where we can develop ourselves, where we can be a developed um, charismatic leader. Um, <clears throat> the moral obligations. What are the moral obligations of a charismatic leader? A very blessed afternoon to one and all, respected panel of judges, my worthy competitors from different areas, and also my dear fellow friends witnessing the Extremer Speech Competition. I am Hoka Ami, representing Capital College of Higher Education from Kohima. Today, the topic which I pick is Egyptian according to me. So, as we all know, the importance of Egyptian. Today, in this 21st generation, as we all know, without Egyptian, we are nothing. When we compare to the 19th or beyond that, the Egyptian was not much important for me, but for them, as for me, because, but these days, each and every one of us is very competitive, and also, these days, to go to a higher boss, we have to work hard. We have to have more education than our edu we have to be more educated than others. So education is very much important. According to me, without education, it's like a coffee without sugar. <laughs> when you take a uh, just let me give some example of Egyptian also. There are many people, many rich people in society without Egyptian. So whenever they organize this and that, their colleges, whoever has any intellectual function, we never invite them because we know they don't have any capable to share or to guide us. But if we if we are educated enough, though we don't have a single pretty, we'll be invited from different places to know the value of the education. Thank you everyone. Have a blessed day. A very good afternoon to each and everyone. My name is Nina Wai Atro. I'm from City College of Art and Commerce. I'm currently pursuing in BA Second Semester. <coughs> and then my topic for this extempo is uh, give and operate between, uh, I mean, when I do uh, uh, between an assistant professor in private sectors and and and, and LDA in government. Ah, well. It's a very hard one, <laughs> but um, just give me a moment and then I won't take much time, of course, uh, but yeah, there is. Okay, um, the difference between government and uh, private sectors are very different, um, whereas the government teachers or government and all the LDA services and all these things, the government, they earn a lot. Whereas uh, the private teachers, they earn a little bit less of money because government has very like typical types of issues uh, which we understand comparing even like comparing between the government teachers and as well as the private sector teachers. The government teachers, they don't give a, you know, the specific, uh, specific education to the people when they need it the most. But whereas the private sectors, they give much importance to the people, they learn 
and they work out day and night so that they can, uh, the private sectors can give a good, you know, education to the people. I might be going out of the topic, but please forgive me. And then, um, that's all. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Respected panel of judges and all the galleries. I, Noklem Sikunya, representing Konarsman Pradesh. My topic is role of students in society. As we all know, we the students, we have so many roles to play in society. Society, we are going to, we are the future of tomorrow. And we are going to lead all this through our activities. And the role of students in society is showing the way we are to go, teaching that what we have learned, sharing the thing that which we have learned from the education institution, as well as understanding those who are in many places, there are so many people, they are not equal with each other. We must have to understand that, we must have to let them know what really, uh, what really society is. Being a student, we must have to know how to lead the society. We must have to play an important, important role in order to influence others. We must have to set a good example to the people that he or she, the students, they are the typical one. And he or she, that students, she is performing or he is performing well. They will identify through the activities that we should perform. There are so many roles, even if I say, if I speak a whole day, it won't be possible to speak out all those roles. But the main roles that we should need to play is that we must have to set a good example to the people in order to learn by all the people that we are as students and that is the most important thing. That, uh, that's all. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, judges, eager listeners, and fellow participants. Uh, my name is Tokum Zoe from Eastern Christian College, uh, currently at the first semester, and my cheat says status of women today. And uh, strangely enough, I was thinking about the same topic when I was coming on. Like, uh, I was thinking, maybe, what if I get a topic like that? Uh, so, this thing has been on my, my mind for a very long time because right now feminism is on the rise and then women are coming up to power with men. But the one thing that I feel is that men and women are different. They're equal in their own different ways, but they're not equal within the same things. Like, we can clearly see that physically, just physically, men and women are not the same. And so women should rise in their own field. God created, if for those who believe in God, God created women and men different. And if you believe in science, women evolve differently, men evolve differently. And I may be offending some feminists, but please hold on, I'm not against you. But the thing is, women right now, they are on the rise and their status right now has improved a lot. Can you imagine being in the olden days where you have to burn yourself in some religions if your husband died? Those are just, just very stupid ideas that women were meant to follow. And Although women are on the rise right now, some in some parts of the world, women still have to cover their faces. And then, the funny thing is that the women actually they want to do that because they think that that is what their religion teaches them. And maybe it's okay for them, but in today's world, when everything is changing and when we're moving at a very fast pace, women today should stand up stronger and rise in their own fields. Women should be. Uh, willing to do things that they're good at, willing, willing to do things that they're uh, made to do. And then, uh, the one thing is that women should not compare with men. Instead, women should be in a different level than men, because uh, women and men are not the same. The thing is, uh, women try to be so much like men that they lose their origin originality. They become someone else that society wants them to become. They become like men. But women, you guys are not men. You are females. You are different from the men, you are made to do things men cannot do. So what I want to say is, the status of women today, though may sound good, 
but it's very masculine and you are going towards the masculine way. You don't have to be under men, you have to be women stand differently and maybe hire a man. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Tigzuri Jamia from the Tanjing Imadoyo College in Mako. This is Dr. Chajit, my fellow contestants, and all my dear brothers and sisters who present here today. My topic is Total Tan on single use of plastic is a positive thing. Yes, I totally agree that Total Tan on a single use of plastic is a positive thing. Because, see, every year, why our climate is becoming hotter and hotter is all because of this kind of uh, using this kind of recycling thing, the plastic thing, is for our environment. And why? They are always a campaign and protesting against this plastic because it's a useful thing. If there is nothing, if there is a negative impact to that, then people won't put it against that. And why? Even the school, even the institution, even the kids, they are teach not to use the plastic because there is a possibility to us that. And also, I, I totally agree, I, I, I totally agree that it was a best friend and all, we can say all the mineral bottles, even the different things you find here and there. Instead of using this, you can use them like water filters and this and that. So, so that it all spoils our environment. And yet I just believe that if we could be able to win against the diffusion of plastic, a group of people will really enjoy our life in a very meaningful and a very successful way. And at the same time again, why? Even the plastic bags are also part of the shop. Because they are what they fit to us there. We know that our people, because of our civilized, uh, mentality, we could not be able to avoid it. So yes, it's a very nice thing for all of us to change our mentality, to use our mentality, to think seriously, and not only about hearing, but we should give in our heart and we should put it in the world so that our world will become better place to stay in. That's all. Thank you so much. Have a good time. I'm a free bird, not a fish, and smart to me. I'm a human being with an independent bird. Jen Ali, as far as that. Respected by all judges, my fellow contestants, and everyone can be here. The topic on which I'm going to speak now is dignity of labor. We are all mere human beings and every one of us here are created for a different purpose. If every one of us here were created for the same purpose and every one of us here were the same, we would all be just like robots that were created with a specific religion. Come on, dignity of labor. A person look at the farmer, it's all because of the farmer that we're getting food to eat every day. It's all because of his or her sweat and tears and the pain that they have to bear near the heat of the sun and the rain that we can get food. We, should, we can't look down on them just because they are farmers and we can't look up on a prime minister or someone on a higher position just because they are up there. Dignity of labor. Even in a school, just like the, an institution for an example. When we look at it, every one of us, their students, their jogglers, their sweepers and teachers. If there were if the teachers were in there, from where would the student acquire knowledge? Of course there are books, but they need teachers to teach them. And look at if there were the jogglers who would bring the bill each morning for to remind the students that they have to come to the institution and acquire knowledge for a better tomorrow. Dignity of labor, every day we walk out, we walk out each day and we forget to remind ourselves that we need to respect each and every position, each and every and everything that a person do is for some specific purpose and to fulfill the whole um, duty of this uh, universe. What I want to remind each one of us today and what I want to state here is that we should all respect each and every individual and each and every work he does because that's all for the betterment of the society and that's what we have been sent to earth for. Each and every one of us here created for a purpose and we need to fulfill that. Thank you so much.
very good afternoon to all the respected judges, my fellow competitors, and to all of us present here. My name is Prof. Bartali Kobanokar. I am representing Model Christian College. And my topic here is, if you were to write a book, what would it be? <clears throat> well, in my opinion, I think it's time for us, not for us, but for everyone, especially the youth, we are, every one of us, like, in the society, we are all talking about education the most because each and every part of the society is related to education. Says, and because when a child is born, the parents start thinking about their education. So we have to start to change the society, to change the future, our future, your future, which begins with education. And especially the education system of India, from what I learned and from what I saw is very narrow-minded. The education system of India is not providing us the what to say. It's not the education system of India is not giving us the correct learning or in other words I'll say the curriculum of India, believe me or not, is the same curriculum that was made before independence. So we are still following the same. The even society of India, it's like we, the you are taught in such a way that we are only taught to go to school, college, and earn a job. We are not taught, we are not encouraged to do our, to look further than that. It's like business. We have many other sources like to improve. But India is the education system in India, we are just men. If we are such a way to do jobs, that's all. Thank you. Respected panel of judges, my co participants and all, and everyone present here. Good afternoon. My name is uh, John Boy Simpson, representing Modern College Kumba. I am currently pursuing BA for the semester for the science honors. And the topic on which I'm going to speak this afternoon is secularism in India. First and foremost, what is the meaning of secularism? Secularism means freedom of religion where you have the right to worship, to worship, practice and propagate any religion. In the Constitution of India, it is mentioned from Article 19 to 21 where freedom of religion is provided. One thing that we need to remember about secularism is that the word secular is present and mentioned only in the preamble and not in the constitution. According to the Keshav Nanda Pradeep case versus State of Kerala, the Supreme Court gave a ruling that um, the word secular mentioned in the preamble is not binding on the parliament whenever they make laws. And so when um, this issue of CAB gap, Citizenship Amendment Bill arose, um, the, whole state, the whole states of Northeast were um, protesting against the CAB. Why? Because they said that this CAB violates um, the very word secularism that is mentioned in the preamble. One thing that I am grateful for about Nagaland is that we are still able to practice Christianity. We label Nagaland as a Christian state, and by God's grace, till today, the churches are opened, we can go and worship anytime we want. We are free to practice our own religion. I think this is what we should be grateful for. Now, now in this uh, CAB, um, Muslims are excluded. And that is why many people are protesting, saying that um, the word secular has been violated by the parliament. Now, Muslim, why are Muslims excluded? This is because the refugees, the immigrants who are about to be uh, re uh, receiving um, citizenship have been chased out from Pakistani countries, Islam countries, Afghanistan, Bangladesh, and Pakistan. And that is why Muslims are excluded. For me, I am grateful and proud to say that secularism is still not violated in India because as Christians, God has been good to us. We are able to practice our own religion. We are able to attend churches. And we are grateful for this gift from God. So I think um, this is an opportunity for me to share to you all about the goodness of God in our state, Nagaland. Thank you. Education is the most powerful weapon that can change the world. 
Good morning to our respected panel of judges, uh, my fellow competitors, and my beautiful and handsome audience. Well, my name is Roland from Mount Mary College, BA second semester, uh, taking up political science as my honors paper. The topic for today is the important I picked is smart city according to me. Now, for me, a smart city, now, let me briefly explain what is a smart city. A smart city will, of course, include a better education, good roads, better electricity, and then, well, of course, better institution for education, where education are at the state level. Now, how can a smart city be implemented, or how can a smart city come into existence? It is not only by the efforts of the government that a smart city can come into existence. It is our duty and your study, the educated students and our leaders, that a smart city can come into existence. Now, many people say that, look at Kohima, it's a smart city. Comparing to some of the other states and districts, yes, it's a lot way smarter, but is it really smart? The answer lies in your heart, and let me not say it. Now, when we compare our cities to other cities, our modern cities, metropolitan cities, <laughs> that was just Now, when we, when we compare our smart cities to those smart cities, we find that our smart cities are not really smart. Uh, what do we gain in Nagale? Many things. But what's the most important thing? Education? Yes. Good roads, of course. Electricity? We don't find electricity much. We are in fact contributing very much because we don't use electricity much. And, when, and then we are saving a lot of resources. So, smart city, according to me, would of course include better education, as I said before, healthcare, good roads, electricity, where the citizens have the right to have their, right, have their own civil rights, political rights, economic rights, where you get equal pay for equal work. And when and a smart city would, of course, include secularism, better education, as I mentioned before. And therefore, in summing up together, smart city is not only a job, it's not only a, we should not take smart city as a dream, but it should be a reality. And how should be the end? How will it be a reality? It is through our efforts, the educated students of today and tomorrow, that the smart city can come into existence. Thank you. Good afternoon to your respective judges and to all my good brothers and sisters present here. My name is Benjamin, representing Patkai Christian College. My excellent work topic is my vision for Nale five years from now. We are from Norris and we are from the state of Nagaland. Nagaland is a state for the tribes, that is for the Naga, and Naga consists of under death, many of tribes again. So my vision for Nagaland is that after five years, let me say for after five years, I want to see myself as a politician and I want to develop Nagaland. So what I want to see in Nagaland is that after five years, I want, I want the students to know that Education is not only about books, but I want to know that education is about a character, a good character. What I want from the city is that a good infrastructure, where they are, like everyone, we can see the conditions of the traffic road, traffic. Look at the conditions of the two, two vehicle road. They don't follow traffic. After five years from now, I want them to follow the traffic. And regarding the traffic again, after five years, I want I want a four-lane road to be completely developed such that there won't be any kind of traffic and there won't be anyone late for the school, late for the office, or late for any program. And after five years from now, I don't want any, I don't want to see any plastic, which is an environmental issue. And after five years from now, I want Nagaland to be the smart city which we can always depend upon. Instead of, instead of going to other states and seeking for better education or seeking for better health care. I want Nagaland, and I want to see Nagaland. A place where all the other states, a place where from other countries will come to Nagaland and will see that, and they will say that this Nagaland is a state which we can always depend. And this Nagaland is a state that everyone long for it to stay here. And after five years from now, after five years, my vision for Nagaland is that 
my vision for Nagari is that this uh, we should not be. I want the youth not to be very fashion because fashion always changes, but fashion always changes, but our character will never change. We should develop. We should have a good vision for the character. So summing up everything, what I want to say is that our my vision for Nagari is that everyone should become a better person. Thank you. Respected uh, judges, lecturers, competitors, and my, uh, and my dear friends, the uh, topic of my speech is should there be more of such events like the PCAM, PCAM sports and uh, literary meeting. Honestly, uh, since this is the first ever we have taken, taken uh, looking at it, the, the cooperation from each uh, colleges, schools coming together to form such an event. It's really a heartwarming thing. Uh, I really thank everyone that talks who are participating in such events or at least coming to s just sit and show this work. It's such an amazing thing. And I honestly think that yes, we should uh, obviously there should be more events like this. Why not? Because this shows that uh, there are more interesting things that will be coming up in the future events and uh, let's just uh, hopefully more way with uh, think more of such programs there will be more interesting stuff uh, coming in the coming years and, yeah it's a very good afternoon to each one of you present here respected panel of judges and all the participants my name is Karito Lasso, and I'm representing Seoul Christian College. My topic today is greatest threat of today's generation. To start off, we are all youths, and all the people present here, some students, some big people, but we all know, we all know from where we start, we all know from where we grow. So as we grow up, the people who have already experienced the ages, the stages of every individual, every childhood, every youth age knows what a youth faces, what a teenager faces. So according to my opinion, the greatest threat of today's generation is depression and anxiety. It is because of depression and anxiety that most of those youths like me and most of the teenagers faces who are who are struggling to get out of it, who are not able to get the current concept, who are not able to get the attention, the attention that they need from the people around them, the love that they need around them, the people who need to mold them, the people who need to shape them. They are lacking because of that. Because of that, these are the people who grow up and possess a threat to the environment. It is because of this kind of people who are not getting the attention, who are not getting this type of uh, love from the people. Because of this, they commit suicides, which is also another threat to the people around them. They see these kind of things that, they have, that happens, committing suicides, going through in, uh, anxiety, facing depression. This is where the other people also copy them. It is not us who wants to be depressed. It is not us that we fall into anxiety and depression. It is our mentality. It is our thought. And when people like us, the younger generation like us, help one another, help the people who are in depression, help the people who are in anxiety and depression, help them get out of it. This is when we will be able to change the environment and the society and the world. Students like us, the people who are present here, let us stand strong together. Let us face against anxiety. Let us face against depression. Let us help those people to stand up on their feet. Give them enough love. Give them enough attention. Show them their potential. Teach them that it is us together who will create a better environment. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Hello. Best students, members, and our judges lectures and students from different colleges. Well, I'm Yuga Vishwabhi, representing Sadole College, Koyama. Here my topic is my opinion on Naga solution. Uh, I'm a bit nervous after I first the week. <laughs> yes, uh, we can see the things around. Like uh, see, uh, we shall act 2019. And not only Ganakas, 
but the states across India that we are facing uh, this problem. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he should direct your path. Respected panel of judges and ladies and gentlemen, a pleasant good afternoon to you all. Uh, my name is Ms. Mukhala from Shamata College. The topic I chose is importance of skill oriented education. Uh, in my opinion, the uh, oriented education is very important in our now society because like most of the uh, students or like a youth from the backward era especially, they make, they have skills and talents but they lack in education because of the financial problems and uh, the parents couldn't afford or since they are far away from the cities like Mapur and Alan, they couldn't uh, bring up they don't uh, show their talents which they have within themselves. So I kind of feel like that our uh, uh, our ministers or any, our politicians they should emphasize more on the backward areas to explore the talent of the uh, of the youth that are in the backward areas like Shamator and Kingsang or Kifri. There are so many students who are potential enough in them. They have the potential to do, but they they don't have the platform to explore themselves. So I prefer that even in the college like that, uh, especially in the in the area of Free and Kinsang and Shamatu. Emphasis should be placed on the skill oriented education because students are very skilled, which, which we witness through our eyes. So, for me, like uh, vocational education should be emphasized, should be given importance to them in order to mold the children more important. Because, as we see, we are, having, uh, we are getting education, we are having a formal education, and that, that's well and fine. But if we see closely, this thing is very competitive, and then some people can't reach true formal education. So, we must emphasize, we must look into the potential what an individual can do, and then we should look within the ability of the of individual and what he can do and what he can not and then we should emphasize on we should give education according to what is based within them once again a pleasant good afternoon thank you know well your thoughts and beliefs if they need to be altered alter it be the change good afternoon one and all respected jury my co-speakers and all my dear listeners my name is Rishi Burkhan, representing St. John College. And the topic on which I'll be speaking today and putting forward my views and opinions are sector. What would you choose and why? Well, I would like to choose the public sector because we need to be clear what which sector works for what and what they perform. Private sectors, they work for less, with less objectives, but public sector, they work for the overall, for the overall country. Public sectors are also lead also to a productive tomorrow and then it is also a very innovative sector. Good afternoon everyone, respected judges, moderator, delegates, invitees and all the other participants. My name is Mula Mula Chotso, representing St. Joseph's College, Jakama. The topic I have picked is youth as an agent of social change. We have heard before youth. Youth are the future of a country, a nation, a state. How are youth as an agent of social change? Youth are in education. We learn from different uh, perspective. Some of us are uh, good in studies. Some of us are good in sports. Some have speaking skills. Some are, some are able to boost their confidence in their own way. Youth play a different role in the society. Youth, when we are able to take up the courage to be truthful, to be honest, we form as an agent of social change. Because society is based on truth. It cannot run when it is based on a lie. 
youth as today. We need to boost ourselves so that the tomorrow will be better. Social change needs youth who think differently, who think out of their comfort zone, so that they are able to change the society into a better place, into a better environment. Youth should know what they are doing, should not involve themselves in abusive things or in other, uh, in other uh, bad ways. Youth, Europe as a society must be able to have self-confidence, self-control, and that is how a society can be shaped. I believe that youth is a very strong weapon towards changing the society into a better place and make it and making the environment a good place to live in. Peace be with the youth. Thank you. Respected Principal, Vice Principal of Petal College, our panel of judges, and all the listeners, as well as my co-speakers. A very good afternoon to all of you. Uh, the topic which I picked this afternoon is role of educational institutions in promotion and transmission of culture. Um, as I stand here this very afternoon, I will be probably speaking of another culture, transmission and promotion of another culture. Uh, we recently held a tribute, uh, the tribute day in the campus where we were asked to, you know, uh, wear our Naga shawl and come. And I guess that that is a gesture which is more of, you know, uh, we are promoting and transmitting the culture or my culture with, you know, the other students. See, um, when I wear an Angami shawl and stand here or come in the campus and my friends come in with your you know, uh, different uh, tribes of uh, shawls of their own tribes. We get to understand that, oh yeah, he may be from that tribe, or he may be from, she may be from that tribe. And then the shawl that we wear also represents things that we ought to learn. That is, which have a symbol of an animal or some sort of signs that we get to learn that, yeah, of course, this, uh, maybe this very tribe shows some sort of, you know, resemblance of a loyalty or a sort of, they might be of a respectable person or like that. So the role of educational institutions in promotion and transmission of culture can be carried out not only from the books or from the classroom environment, but from some sort of activities uh, where they can, you know, uh, tell the students or give uh, out an information that you come with like that or you wear this or let's say uh, we have a sort of folklore things that we come up with. Our English department of our college uh, has come up with a folk, folk tale sort of magazine where they you know, emphasize more of uh, the stories from their own tribes and all these things, which addresses the stories that we have already forgotten or our parents have forgotten and which has not been addressed. So it's some sort of things that, you know, the collective uh, responsibility or the collective work of the institution with the students and teachers works together in order to inform the students or the people of the society better of the culture or the tradition. Thank you so much. A very good afternoon to one and all, respected judges, my fellow competitors, and everyone present here. My name is Kuto Asumi, representing Unit, Unit College. The topic on which I have picked is a very controversial one. My view on the ongoing four land project between Kohima and Dimapur. Once again, my view on the on, ongoing four land project between Kohima and Dimapur. Uh, First of all, I would like to thank God for giving me this opportunity to speak on this topic because this is such a topic on which everybody wants to put their views on but it isn't talked about much because the truth, as said before by my brother, all lies inside our hearts and we know what's going on but we do not have the guts to say it. So my personal views and this is my views is that we this project is not the project that has been started only this year. It has been going on for some few years and will be going on and on and on because as we all know what is going on in the current government but 
what I feel is that the ongoing project is a very good start for our Naga, especially because it's been very long since our, the people of the common people that is us were envisioning good roads. What good good what is the reason why we are envisioning good roads is because the transportation for Nagali is very low and when there are good transports, everything will excel. The shops, the prices, everything will come down, the transport rates will come down, cars will stay, stop broke, uh, breaking down in roads and many other stuff, we students will stop, stop, get, uh, stop, will get early to colleges and stuff on and on and on. So this following project, what uh, for me is that the ongoing process is going on very smoothly and that it will be going on some few years but it will be accomplished uh, in the near future and that this project will help not only the government but it will benefit the common people in many ways uh, providing us um, with many amenities and also uh, mostly in our transport since our transportation system is very bad and that every day we can see many cars breaking down in the roads plus us getting less for colleges so for me it's very good and that I hope that our fallen uh, roads will be over soon. Thank you. Good afternoon, I will pay my best respect to uh, panel of judges, co-speakers and principals and le principals lecturers and my word of opinions and to my all of this. Mm. <coughs> my topic is on social media and its impact on the youth. Audrey. <laughs> so uh, nowadays everyone is busy focusing on PUBG and ML. But that's not, uh, that's not what I like. And I've been, I've been deeply hooked with PUBG nowadays. So social media it has disadvantage and advantage. So for a wise man and a wise youth, social media is very much helpful. They, for example, they updated uh, every news of what is going on currently affairs about uh, global issues or political issues. They updated on everything. And um, the advantage is that people nowadays they don't know how to use and how to cope up with the time. They busy are uh, spending the time in games or Instagram, WhatsApp, YouTube, uh, Facebook, where boys and girls they. <laughs> so be wise to. Think straight and be wise to how to cover up with social media. Whether it is if it's disadvantage for you, just leave it. It's not made for your life. If it's uh, advantage for your preparation or for uh, for preparation for your exam or NPCs, UPCs, cover up with that, not with PUBGs or MLs. So what I want to share is that social media is a uh, Got a disadvantage, in the, uh, disadvantage for a beautiful students. You will get the image in games and publishes for a, for a successful who think of uh, succeeding in the future. They will use the updating with uh, latest news, issues, that's all. So, before you develop, I want to stop. Thank you. <laughs>